Kevin, we're here. The Chosen Explained, episode four of season three, episode, this is part one, Kevin, clean. Welcome back. Welcome back. Hey, it's Happy New Year. <laughs> Happy New Year. Hey, man, we're here. Yeah, we made it another year. Another year. And uh, The Chosen, as well, has made it another year. That's true. And in this episode, we see uh, the disciples going out two by two. Yeah. Uh, an opening montage of sorts. And again, this is a spoiler review. So if you have not seen uh, this episode of The Chosen, uh, watch later. Watch later or, uh, you know, catch up with us uh, around the bend. And so uh, they walk out two by two, Kevin. Uh, this is something that Jesus mm -hmm. told him he was, he was going to have them do a couple episodes ago. Mm -hmm. But we got the Jesus heavy episode last That's week. That's how we ended episode two. Correct, yeah. He commissioned them all to go out two by two. So what did you think about how they showed that yeah so like the montage so the, uh -huh. the black and white montage of all the different things and, and i i told uh i actually told my wife megan because we watched it earlier today uh i really enjoyed how they did it because yeah. i am what we get a lot and this is across tv shows this isn't just the chosen mm -hmm. we get a lot of exposition it's always we got to go to the cave and get the thing we got to go to the town and get the thing you know it's like it's always a lot of explaining what has happening you know yeah. and to have just five minutes of quiet and it's like you you can hear they're talking you hear matthew go out mm -hmm. to one of the the demons you know and you can see him mouth it and it it just told the story you didn't need all of that explanation well we were in some area and this is the type of person we're healing and this is what we healed and this is the type of devil we cast out and all that and it would have been fine if they did it that way but i really appreciated that uh, and you saw the looks on the faces like when they you know experienced you know uh john well who was it? uh little john right or not little yeah, all but john. Of them. yeah all of them but there was one scene in particular where john was like uh healed the, the blind woman and he was just like ah <laughs> like he was so yeah. excited you know you could see it on their faces and little james too i think that yeah. it was a very uh i really liked how it, you, you first you know big james is preaching he you know little james kind of still is very upset you know, yeah. uh, he's and uh, you're not sure how this is going to go. Yeah, you saw him was... take the cane away from the other guy, right? Yeah. So the other guy who stood up and walked. Sure. You know, and but then after while that, he was holding his cane. Yeah. yeah. And then they go to another scene after that. Now all of a sudden, James has got this huge little James now has the big smile on his face, and he's you know preaching and yeah. teaching with uh, all boldness, where before he was just kind of not having it. And so I really appreciated, and because I felt, I felt like, okay, yeah, this this is more about showing the impact, and it was. This was really more about what, how this was affecting the disciples and what was what was going through the disciples or um, how this was changing them Yeah. more than the impact and highlighting the people. Because you're more, if you were to do this same kind of episode, 10, 15 years yeah. ago in another campy, very religious, TBN type, you know, um, episode, it would yeah. be, it would be the other way around. It would be, and it would be, it'd probably come out a little hokey and campy maybe and a little bit, um, uh, don't you think? And yeah, so, yeah. I could, I could picture like using some sort of like bad CGI or something, you know, to like sort of grow limbs out or do something like over the top to try and like show the spectacle of it. But what I think they did here was just perfect. It was just like, look, you know. I don't have to show them uh, with CGI being healed in some way. It's just a simple like I, I your hand. We just we can we can assume that when you put your hand on somebody's eyes, they can't see, and yeah. you lift it up, and, and she starts going, "I'm shocked," you know, like yeah. you know, or or campiness in the terms of like, uh, just the cheesiness of the the TV shows uh, yeah, that we watch. It's you know, just, it's like it, there's a there's a there's a there is a aspect of realism that I really appreciate where it is the, not the disciples were, you know, they made it a point because I really felt like the, all the, all these scenes, the actors did such a great job with nonverbal cues expressing how they were feeling in that particular instance, Matthew freaking out about, you know, not sure you get <laughs> spit on because you know, deliverance is a nasty business. Yeah. If you've mm -hmm. ever watched deliverance videos of people getting delivered of demons, it's nasty. I mean, there's vomit, there's spit, there's mucus, uh, that's usually how when demons come out, they manifest themselves in those ways. You'll see you'll see a lot of bodily fluid come up and out. They uh, showed that pretty well. They showed yeah. you know. And so if you don't like that stuff, Deliverance Ministry not might be for which I thought was great. You heard Dallas pick the you know the mm -hmm. the uh, you know the Matthew type character, and who doesn't like germs and you know walk around in episode one with a handkerchief to touch mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. Here he's getting spit on by this demon possessed man, but still presses through. Still like. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm going to do this and command this thing and go. And, and 
they're all just as equally shocked. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like I love that because that's that's real life ministry, folks. You know, it's it's you don't have to have all the confidence knowing or what's going to happen. You you just have the faith to step out and do it. Yeah. And they are all just not sure of what's about to happen. They've never done this before, and yeah. they all and that's the part, the realism, the non-campy part. Or, oh, yes, I'm a disciple of Jesus. I am Peter here to pray for you, you know, or, or what, like, mm-hmm. you might have had in the past. No, they're like, uh, okay, let's do it, you know, like, and, and they're encouraging each other. Like, yes. come on, dude, go up there and They even have, like, the, the, the post-game recap around the kitchen table where well, they, they want to talk get... about, like, what'd you do and how did that go and on? Yeah. That was my favorite scene of the entire episode. Really? And, two, it was incredibly... Um, and we can get into it now, but I definitely wanted to touch on that. Is that if I, I hope if, if anybody gets an impact from watching this episode and gets stirred up, would be to encourage to be just like one of the disciples and that they need to get out there and they need to step out and pray for people and to minister and to witness to people. Because what was we know, like, you know, 5% of Christians don't do it. Uh, most, you know, we've talked about this before. 5%? You mean only? Five, only 5% do it. Oh, yeah. Yes. Uh, 95 do not. I mean, yeah. if I didn't say that correctly. Yes, only about 5% of Christians, professed born-again Christians, witness to others, whether the strangers, family members, co-workers, pick your poison, doesn't really matter. It They, they don't do it. 95% don't do it. And that's a shame. And some, a lot of it has to do with fear of man. A lot of it has to do with insecurity. Rejection. Re- fear of rejection, fear of failure, fear, uh, all of those things. It's fear. You know, God does not give a spirit of fear. And that's what really enjoyed this episode of showing through not ver- verbal cues, but just the actors did such a phenomenal job of showing uncomfortableness, anxiety, a little bit of like... You know, like especially when people are manifesting and spitting up or somebody's yeah. got crutches and now I'm holding the cane and, you know, little James and who am I to pray for this guy and tell him he's going to be healed when I'm not healed myself. Uh, a lot of people use that as excuses. Uh, I, I've used that and thought of that, those same excuses myself that the, the devil's whispered into. Mm-hmm. Who are you to pray for them to get deliverance when, you know, financial deliverance when you still, you got bills you can't pay. Or you had a drink Who, at the restaurant two weeks ago. How can you pray for an alcoholic and these sorts of things? Anything uh, yeah, like that. Whatever. And and so, uh, yeah. So, or it's trouble you're fighting with your wife, but now someone wants you to pray for their marriage. Like, you know, it doesn't. Because it's not about you. You know, this is this is the power of God through you. Mm-hmm. It had nothing to do with, you know, and that's mm-hmm. part of when they get around this that's table the theme now. theme of that talk. Yeah. They begin to start talking. They're so, and, and really, they never use the word, which is great. Uh, but what they're really talking about is the anointing. When you will step out in faith and begin to pray for others and begin to minister, it was, it, I loved the things that they were saying, like, you know, I was saying stuff like Jesus and stuff was coming on my mouth that I didn't even know, you know, it's I like he was giving me the me, words. Yeah, he was yeah. giving me the words and things were coming out that were saying that I, I couldn't even believe he, hearing myself say these things because, uh, you know, and that is absolutely very true. That is absolutely exactly what happens for the disciples and for us today. When you step out and you begin to minister and you step out on that knife's edge or that cliff's edge, like, OK, God. If you do not, if you do not show up, I'm going to fall on my face. I'm going, you know, it's, not, it's, and, and that's the place where God wants you to always be, where you have to find where you end and God begins. And when you can find that spot where you live in that moment, you will see the miraculous and God will show up. The Holy ghost will show up. He will give you the words to say, you will have, you know, uh, words of knowledge or a word of wisdom. You will, you will all of a sudden scriptures that you hadn't even thought of or hadn't read in maybe, you know, a month or two no, or even volunteer a year themselves ago, will begin to bubble up yeah. an old sermon that you, you know, the Holy spirit will bring to remembrance, the things that you've heard in the past and you've learned and, and be, it'll just start flowing out. And it's what we call the church. If you've heard people say is the anointing where the anointing comes upon you, the power of God comes on you. The unction of God comes on you and you be able to, you begin operating in the, in the spirit realm. You begin to operating by the power and the unction of, of the Holy spirit. And this is what the disciples were basically in a very like you not having the language 
you know, very confused. Like, I still don't have understanding. I still don't understand mm -hmm. why, you know, and it is not all about the head. It's about the heart. It's about your, it's about stepping out in faith and believing in your spirit. And when they were really like under, they were really racking their brains. Like, how did that work? If I didn't understand it, like mm -hmm. I want understanding. And that's, that's very much the flesh, right? Like we want, we want to have this all figured out before I go do it. Yeah. I want to know. I, I've never turned the light switch on and asked how it worked. Yeah. Never turned on the TV and wondered how that happened. I just watched mm -hmm. the TV. Yeah. You know, so we don't always need understanding to do something. That's right. Uh, yes, that's let me faith. let me ask you, though, because I can already hear the people uh, watching this right now. Okay. That's all great, Kevin. Uh -huh. The anointing is awesome. It and, is. and it brings <laughs> up, brings things to your remembrance and it gives you courage and boldness and, uh -huh. you know, it allows you to minister to someone wherever you're at in your life, whether you got stuff in the closet, you're still trying to work out. You can still be used by God to minister to others. That's right. That's wonderful. It, but when I watched these guys, they had a hundred percent success rate. Whoa. Glad you brought that up. <laughs> everybody they prayed for, everybody they touched. So what did you think about that? I thought that uh I thought that was uh other than the other than the scripture that talks about, you know, we went out and prayed for people and it, now this is the apostles I'm talking about. So that uh -huh. I, uh, I I don't have it in front of me, but you know, we can go look in the gospel. I'm gospels. talking about the, the yeah, the yes. episode, the beginning, the black and white. I uh, thought it was montage. probably accurate of what happened. You think? I don't know. I don't think so. And that's the part where I would say, if I w if I were to change or add anything. Anyway, to finish my thought, in case somebody was curious, yeah, there's there is scripture that talks about they went out and prayed for people, and, and not everybody got healed, not everybody got sick, I mean, not not everybody that was sick got healed. And I'll try and look it up while you're while you're sharing this. Okay, uh, yeah, because what Jesus warns them, he says, "Look, you're gonna go two by two, and if anyone doesn't receive you." This is, you know, knock the dust off your boots. Let the you well. You saw the them piece. getting dragged out at one, in one point of the episode. Um, uh, uh, it was Philip and Andrew. They were getting, they got pushed out of town. They got pulled by the arms, and they were walked through this through the square, and they were kicked out. If you didn't see that part, no, I did not. And maybe, or maybe I just didn't catch that uh, it uh, as clearly and realize what was happening. And that's good. So then they did put something. Maybe it wasn't as clear and, um, as it could have been. Or maybe as long and as dramatic of, of knocking on doors, having people say, look, we, we don't want to hear what you have. Or or even praying for someone and they're just kind of, you know, they're laughing at you the whole time. They don't really believe uh, in any of this and they don't get healed or they don't get delivered or, you know, that they're, that that is part of it. Um, I don't know whether or not the, the disciples experienced any of that, but I yeah. definitely believe that they experienced rejection um, and that not everyone wanted to receive uh, prayer or sure. wanted to receive the message that they had come to uh, talk about uh, Jesus and and this new kingdom of God that is that is here at hand that, that, that this message. Uh, well, sir, you, you heard them talk about that at the round table. They were like, Hey, uh, you know, well you went to, you went to Canaan or Canaan, right, it was you know, easy we're easy for, for you. you. Jesus already been there. You know, we went to this place. They'd never heard of this guy. Right. So you know? there was, a, but we didn't really see, we saw some really good, I, uh, and so maybe um, there was some of that, you know, where it wasn't working, but here's, here's the scripture I brought up. So, uh, we okay. can talk about this for a second. It says, uh, this is from, uh, Matthew 17, mm -hmm. uh, Verse 14, uh, came to a crowd. A man came to Jesus, knelt before him. Lord, have mercy on my son. He has seizures and is suffering terribly. He often falls into fire or water. I brought him to your disciples. They could not heal him. So we know here from scripture that there were moments that these disciples were not being able to uh, walk in this power and authority. As, yeah. yeah, yeah, correct. And whether that was an incident where they were out two by two or that was just another word. The exactly. And then we don't know. Right, in yeah. town. And that's where, yeah. Um, but yeah, clearly, you know, there were things that they... They uh, tried to do, but were, were not able. And so I think that that would have been the only thing, that the teachable thing to encourage people. How did the disciples handle uh, when they would go out and people rejected them or even maybe when it didn't have this full effect? Because um, I'll tell you, and I, I want to share this with people because mm -hmm. I think this is important. So when I got born again 10 years ago, and I started reading these stories of faith and, and seeing, you know, you're going to heal people and you're going to, you're going to, you know, uh, do greater things than me and reading scriptures like that, you know, and I got really excited. I was super pumped up. I was ready to go out. We were evangelizing, taking water bottles to homeless people. We were doing all this stuff, expecting all these miracles. Uh, Michael Brown shooting just half more down in Ferguson. Yeah. I am expecting things to start rolling. I'm expecting all these things demons. The Holy Ghost to break out. Yeah. And I'm expecting all this stuff and I don't see hardly any of it, you yeah. know, you know, and, uh, yeah. the, the, the prayers and the faith that I've seen answered in my life are not like what I saw on the chosen. 
last night or this morning when I watched it. You know, right. it's uh, those types of d- demonic deliverances or those kinds mm-hmm. of blind man now he now he sees sorts of things. Yeah. You know, are a lot fewer and far and, and very rare, minuscule. I've seen mm-hmm. I've seen you know glimpses of these things in our walk over the last ten years, but I have not seen on any scale that I'm believing for still. And what I really thought was going to be the norm. This is what I'm talking, and so this is what I want to bring sure. up. I said I thought this was going to be the norm of my new life when I got born again. Is that I was going to start seeing all this stuff happen? I'd seen it on TV. I'd seen people talking about it and all this stuff. And walking in the church for ten years, no matter which church it is, or no matter which group of friends it is, like there are some who believe for deliverance more than another group and these sorts of things. But like as far as like the physical acts of it, uh, okay, yeah. So. And so, what did that do to your faith, or how, what do you think now? So I believe that those I, I I well for one I believe that we're in a season where it's going to start becoming more apparent. I'll will start there. So uh you know but over the over, we're, but what we're going to see more of the, the more of these things yes miracles, yeah. so I, even though I expected that to be the norm I believe now there's it was waiting for a season and now it's going to be everywhere. That's my yeah. personal belief. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. uh but in that season of you know before I came to that realization or at least my revelation that it's you know going to get heavier now I was sort of uh, let down. You know I was yeah, sort sure. of I was sort of like you know hey I thought we were gonna yeah. You know, uh, cast out demons and step on snakes and yeah. do all this kind of stuff. Well, you know, and, I was, and I, was, I was ready to go after it, you know, right. and, and I was born again. I was and I was like, look, I'm telling everybody I know about Jesus and I want to see, you know, somebody sick yeah. say, well, you pray for me and I want to be able to see him get healed right then. I want to go to the hospitals and pray for my friends. And like I was at a church, Kevin, and I uh, <laughs> and they were like, well, the pastor was up there. The pastor was up there talking. And he said, well, cancer didn't, you know, where were, where were the people who believe in healing when my mom was sick of, uh, and had cancer and she died? Well, if, 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 if healing was for today, why do we even need hospitals? And, and like those kinds of thoughts that like, those are difficult thoughts. And I don't think you should be preaching them from the pulpit because that, uh, that yeah. diminishes what the Holy Spirit can do and God, what he has for us and, right. and all those things. But it, those, those are definitely confusing thoughts that people have and limiting people to understanding the fullness of God. And it's not, it, it, let me and it's, it's normal to have those thoughts. It's normal to, and I think many Christians have stepped out and were are believing for the things that were in the Bible and then have encountered, or maybe even believing that their parents or son or daughter or relatives or whoever, best friend was going to get saved and you gave them the gospel and nothing happened. And you're like, wait a minute. Like, yeah. right. So when you're tested with that, when you come through that crossroads, you're going to come across two types of Christians. You're going to, you're, you're going to be you're in, in, in even the devil's going to come. You're, you're going to have two choices. You're either going to still continue, even though you didn't see the miraculous, even though someone didn't get healed or didn't get delivered or whatever it was, the thing that you were praying for, believing for seemed to not mm-hmm. happen. And you mm-hmm. haven't seen any of these miracles, even though they're promised in the Bible and the, and God, Jesus says that greater works will you do Yeah. because I go to see, be the father. I don't know, but I still, and like John saying, still haven't seen the greater works. Mm-hmm. So you can either say, okay, that must not mean, oh, we're going to call. Uh, <laughs> so that either must not mean that, uh, that, that must have been for just them back then. You know, you'll hear some people teach, oh, well, that was for the early church. That's mm-hmm. not for us today. Because we don't see that anymore. It can't be for us. You can't believe for that stuff, John, because that that day is past. Or, you know, so then you, you bring the, the truth of Scripture down. So my expectation was here. This is what I saw. And then you, you water it down and you begin to rationalize. And you begin to make some very lazy theology excuses as to why you didn't see the miracles. Instead, or you can say, look, I may not have seen it, but I, I'm going to continue to believe what God's word said is true. Mm-hmm. I don't know why my level of experience is down here when the word of God says I should be seeing this, but I'm going to continue to press into God and say, God, there's, there's a difference here. I'm seeing, I'm down here, but I read in your word. It's up here. Bring me up. I, I'm going to continue to press in. I'm going to continue to believe and continue to try and continue to step out. Until I see this, because I believe with all my heart and all my spirit, this is available to me. That's what they talked about at the table, too, which I think is important that the chosen touched on us. That the, can you continue to walk in this until you have understanding? One of them said, you know, until you understand this, 
can you just do it anyway? You know, and uh, and that's sort of what you're talking about. Is like, I'm going to continue to pray for people regardless of what it looks like, regardless of what the results are, regardless of what my experience is. And I'm just going to trust that the word of God is doing what it says it's going to do. And if, it, if it's not now, it's later. And if it's not for me, it's for somebody else. Like, that's it's right. always going to be true, though. It's always going to be true. And I used to fall into that trend. If you go back to watch the first season three of episode one, uh, they, when he first warned me, you're going to go out and do all these things. They said, but I don't feel anything. Uh, and Jesus, says, I don't need you to feel anything to do great things. Mm -hmm, there is so a, there is, that is absolutely true. A hundred percent biblical. It is not about you. It's not about your emotions. It's not about your feelings. You could have woke up and been in a bad mood <laughs> and felt like fair and God can still use you because it's about God and it's it, the glory goes to him. It goes, all goes to, to, to God, not mm -hmm. you. You are just, you know, when. When a fireman puts out a fire with a fire hose with the water, you know, no one gives glory to the fire hose. The fire hose just delivered the water to put out the fire. Yeah. Uh, it was just a vessel. It was one way. You could use a bucket. You can use a fire hose. We're delivering. And you were just one of those methods that the Holy Spirit's going to use, a conduit, to go move through you to touch someone else's life. And if that doesn't happen, doesn't mean that there's something wrong with you. It doesn't mean that necessarily you did anything wrong. Um, and it just certainly does not mean God's not moving in today's world that God didn't want them healed. Yeah. Uh, I'm there. Those are all hard questions and that's whether it's, it's not always, there is no, um, easy formula to say, okay, this is why, but we don't, I try not to focus on the, why did it fail? But to focus on the, okay, I'm just, this is, this is still available. Like I may not have achieved it and I'll just turn to God and say, okay, Lord, show me, show me where, you know, if I went, if I went wrong, show me where I went wrong. Mm -hmm. Um, if this wasn't the time, show me when the time is just, just show me. Um, but, uh, and that, you know, so that's, I just want, you know, hopefully the people that are watching this got stirred up and, and excited yeah, let us know what you're thinking too. So in the comments, cause we're going to do a video, uh, looking at some of the comments and questions that you have. So if you've watched episode four, uh, and you have questions about any of the stuff that you saw as far as the miracles or the healings or the deliverance that you saw or comments, uh, that, uh, maybe it did something for you. Maybe it broke something loose in you in terms of your faith or, mm -hmm. or you just got questions about stuff. Feel free to put that in the comments and we will uh, talk about that on a future show. Uh, Kevin, before uh, we leave the episode, I want to talk about uh, a couple of characters uh, yeah. we, we see because this is a two-part episode. So this sure. was part one, clean. The yeah. whole thing is about clean. Uh, the uh, you know the the water's not clean. The the mm -hmm. people who they're going to heal are not clean. And then we see and then we see Eden talk to uh -huh. uh, the lady with the issue of blood. Yes, she shows up in this as well as Jairus, 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 Jairus. Jairus. Uh, uh, also, so two, two, two Bible stories, uh, of, of healing, mm -hmm. uh, that they're setting up to happen. Uh, he, the, that was the last, you, you, her, Jairus's daughter dies in the Bible and, right. and Jesus brings her back to life. And so on uh, his way to, uh, on his to way. pray mm -hmm. for her, she, in, you go ahead. Yeah. Then she, I mean, you read in the gospels, yeah. spoiler alert, <laughs> <Yeah>. but <laughs> the Bible's 2000 old years old. If you haven't read it yet, yeah, 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 spoiler. go read it. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so then, you know, she goes in the crowd and, and gets her healing, but, uh, it's, it, yeah. And so they're setting all these stories up there. Then yeah. what if, what, you know, what, what prompted her to chase after Jesus? Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, how did she hear about him? And, and so, you know, you, you can, you know, none of these conversations obviously are in scripture. Correct. Uh, however, it doesn't make it water it down or make it any less, uh, interesting, um, to theorize and, and because these are, these are real life encounters folks. It's like, yes, this is a biblical story. And yes, this particular conversation probably most likely did not happen. We don't even know if Eden was real. Like it's okay. <laughs> but, but we do know that these kind of conversations happen in real life. Mm -hmm. And That's so this is a, to, to put yourself in these shoes. To, to, to know that it's okay, the, the disciples were probably most likely very nervous about doing these things and were touched. They didn't understand the anointing. when they, I didn't understand the anointing when they anointed. You can't understand it until you experience it. A lot of the word knowledge in the Bible, if you look at it in the original Greek, it means experiential knowledge. There's knowledge, there's book knowledge, and then there's the word knowledge, which means that you can only know it by experiencing it. So if I go, you know, 200 years in the past and try to explain to somebody what it's like to fly into an airplane, they don't even know what an airplane is. They can't imagine what it would be flying at 500, 600 yeah, miles yeah. an hour. Mm -hmm. You can't, you know, you can explain it to your blue in the face. 
And they may be like, oh, okay, I understand. I know, yeah. I know. Like no, the metaverse or the, or, or the Neuralink, <laughs> yeah. to use today's verb, is, you know, like you, talking about these future things that no one can understand. You don't yeah. know until you experience it. Yeah. You just can't know. And so there are things in Scripture, or in, in your relationship with Jesus, knowing Jesus, experience. It's not. That's what when the John 3, 16, I tell people all the time that, you know, that for God so loved the world, you know, um, he gave his only begotten son. Those who believe in him shall not perish. That believe does not mean a head knowledge. The devil believes in Jesus. Mm. It does not save the devil from hell. You do just a head. Acknowledge, oh, I acknowledge Jesus. I acknowledge there was a Jesus. Yeah. No, it is. Jews believe Jesus was there. He just wasn't the prophet. He wasn't the son of man. It's so. knowing <laughs> Jesus in an, in an experiment in ex, experience. Uh, level you must have an experiential knowledge of jesus and believe and trust rely wholly cling to it is not head knowledge and it's where these even the disciples they said like i did not ha understand i had no head knowledge of what i was doing you don't need head knowledge you just need it in your heart you need it in your spirit and just step out and believe the head knowledge comes later through experience um many people i, I went to college learned accounting yeah I learned more when I was on the job, when I got my first accounting job, than I ever did in my four years. And I'm sure a lot of people out there that have degrees, they've gone out and learned a particular trade or a subject, and then they went into the real world and realized that they knew nothing until they began to experience it, until they began to actually put it into practice, until they began to actually touch and you know whether you're a builder or you're an accountant or a doctor or a lawyer until you began to practice your trade and actually put it put it in application did you really begin to learn and it was because the that that kind of experiential knowledge outweighs book knowledge tenfold yeah and it is the same way with your spiritual walk with jesus it's the same way with if you really want to understand and know what's in the bible you have to begin to put it into practice. That's why the Bible says, be doers of the word and not hearers only. It is so important to be a doer. So I encourage you, you know, this episode, watch it as many times as you need to, to, to build up your faith, to get your encouraged. But next time you're with somebody and they're complaining about a headache, you know, say, well, can I pray for you? You know, God, I believe my Jesus is going to, you know, can take that headache away. Mm -hmm. Somebody needs to get, get rid of an addiction, whether it's. It might feel weird at first, but yeah. just step out. That's and what this, faith is important. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of new year's resolutions out there. think people think that I'm going to quit this, quit that, start doing this, start doing that under their own power and will. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it takes the power of prayer to help, you know, uh, people kick certain habits and to uh, take on new ones and so i'll just pray for habits. right now you have the boldness in jesus name to go out there and evangelize uh to everybody and you come in contact with minister to anybody who needs needs uh, who has a need you just minister to them by prayer it's that easy it's that easy that's right uh uh i liked the fact that they showed uh the crowd gathering around matthew's uh apartment where i don't want to really get into the whole eden of it uh, uh -huh. we can save that for some other day but uh jesus shows up and the crowd shows up and they're banging on and mm -hmm. and peter uh, it eventually goes for a walk but uh the crowd i think is important because the crowd shows up with the lady of the issue of blood we see this you know mm -hmm. she's just hiding in the crowd and touches his his garment and he's like power's gone for me and and we see yeah. here in the in in mark five where it tells the story of jairus where it's uh where he goes to, because his daughter's sick and you're gonna see this in the next episode that's why i'm bringing it up yeah that jairus uh goes through the large crowd here my daughter's very sick please come and jesus uh, yeah. and jesus goes and, and does that and so like the crowd here is very important because you know you see the crowd in in the uh you see the crowd in scripture and you you picture that and this is why i love the chosen and this is w one of the reasons i love the chosen and no no matter what the semantics are about like well is this person actually in here and the stories that well, this isn't biblical and what happened and it's like it brings it to life it brings the scripture that i've read a million times to life to my heart to make me understand it in a way that i hadn't thought about it before to bring it to realization that oh my gosh this is probably more likely a situation than how it happened than how i was thinking about it like in this uh, abstract universe where there's a crowd and yeah. you know like they're knocking on the door like that's that, that's a better way to think of the crowd like being everywhere than just uh you like a crowd like like at a at a stadium or something you know what i'm sure. saying and so like it, it brings it into this perspective for me yeah i love this and so when you talk about the crowd showed up and you're going to see some of these things take place it really impacts how i see these stories mm -hmm. and gives me a mental pi picture of them that 
will stay with me longer than just having read the story, right? And so yeah. that's what I think the show does so well is it takes these stories we've read a million times, it brings it home to us, it helps us understand, see clearly the whole scope and picture of the story, even if the characters and the verbiage and the you know the the script that they wrote isn't exactly what may have happened, but it doesn't matter because what's happening is is that it's bringing God's word into your heart in a real way, a real experiential way, uh-huh. as you were talking about. Because now I have the head knowledge and the heart, like you can picture this woman, you can picture this boy and the daughter who was sick. And you know, how did she get sick? Was she just cooking in the kitchen? And maybe she was, you know, and maybe she was the cumin, cumin dust cumin got in her nose and she passed out. I don't know what happened, but it, that, like to me, that's so exciting. And these stories, you know, uh, the chosen is getting the little details, right? You know, yeah. you could just skip over the crowd part. You could skip over some of those things. It'd be a lot easier not to hire 5,000 people to walk, uh, you know, in between Jesus and them and try and figure out the logistics of that, especially in a COVID world. And, you know, when they were filming all this, you know, and, uh, right. uh so I, 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 kudos to them for, uh, you know, hitting these high spots. Yeah, no, I, I agree. It's like, uh, you know, just even just their, the sets designs and the costumes and they, you know, they think about a lot of those things. I, I've always, you know, one of the big desires in my heart is always to, is to, uh, to go to Israel. And oh, I think I'd love that, to you go know, to I Israel. hear everyone says that, you know, when you go there and you actually see the places that you read about in the Bible and you stand on the shores of Galilee and you're looking at, you know, the Temple Mount and you're, you know, just walking up, walking the streets that are thousands of years old mm-hmm. and seeing buildings are, you know, we're Americans. There's nothing here that's older than a hundred years, 200 years. I mean, um, especially you know the stuff that was built originally it's all gone because it yep. was wooden <laughs> decay i mean yeah. it wasn't it wasn't these ancient stone buildings yeah. that have stood the time and and have lasted for thousands of years um not to mention just that you know it's we're america's yeah. <laughs> we're babies compared yeah. to the rest of the world yeah and uh, but yeah to be able to see the city of david and and to you know see the the mountains the same mountains that are still there today that were there during the biblical days uh and jesus looked at the same mountain on, on this earth as you know that i think that just uh, uh i would yeah. love to love to go to definitely on my vision list it has been for 10 years so. one day we'll visit over in israel kevin it'll be yeah. fun uh thanks everybody for watching today's episode i know there's a, several subjects we didn't get into in today's episode but that's okay uh we'll talk to them next time especially you know like the cleaning of the water the cistern they're gonna uh be focusing on uh obviously there's a lot going on with that it's inter uh it's interconnecting a lot of characters Mm -hmm. Gaius shows up i don't know why Gaius is involved in this all of a sudden it's sort of vaguely you know like there was (laughs) first it was quintus and now and then it was the temple and so like i I like that it's sort of bringing everybody together you know and i also like that it, it challenged peter like uh, they're setting up that like, are you going to have faith to see this thing fixed or miracle take place? Or do you need Jesus for it? You know, like that. Uh, I like that sort of, uh, uh conversation they had at the end, but, um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. uh, interesting to see, uh, any thoughts on what you think might happen or any, uh, well, obviously I think that at least next episode, we should probably most likely see if it's really be part two. Yeah. It should pick right up where this left off and we'll see, uh, a couple of miracles yep. and, um, but from there, like, I don't know if we're going to go back and revisit um, Mary, Martha, Lazarus. I don't mm. know if, uh, yeah, I'm not really sure where this is or, or if he's reserving that for the final two episodes. Yeah. And so two, we're yeah. calling Lazarus out of, I don't think we'll see that next episode, but yeah. will, be, will this next episode bring us closer to that moment? I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's, it's, it's exciting really to see. I'm, I'm looking. I'm actually looking forward to. It. I like that they did a two parter. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, they, they're set. They're setting up a, a bunch of big storylines. Uh, I thought it was appropriate, and uh, oh, yeah, I'm really definitely. looking forward to uh, only a couple more episodes on the app. And I think they're going to try and release the, the last two in theaters. And if they don't, mm-hmm. uh, we'll just watch them on the app. Yep. Either way, uh, if you guys have a comment or a question, feel free to share it in the in the comments below. We'll get to it in another video. And thanks for watching today, guys. We appreciate you very much. Until next time, we pray you discover a future and a hope for your life today.